Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my Retina Online Beginner's Guide. In this guide, I'll be giving you a quick overview on how you should get started with Retina Online and kind of what you can expect from the game after you have done that initial beginning period. Of course, first thing you want to do when playing Retina Online is go to your Rockstar Social Club account and set up two-step verification. The reason I'm saying that is not only is it a really smart thing to do in terms of your security of your account, it will also give you 10 gold bars in Retina Online, which will be very useful for for something that we're going to be using them for later in this video. Now, once you've done that, it's definitely time to actually start playing the game because after you're done with the intro and you've set up your character and all that good stuff, uh, what you want to start doing is open up your quick menu right away whenever you finally have control over your character and you are able to simply roam the world of Red Dead Online. Because once you do, what you want to do is start doing daily challenges. The way you can access these daily challenges simply by going to your quick menu on console that's pressing the left D-pad on PC. I don't know yet because the game has not been out on PC yet by the time of recording this. But having said that though, you should be able to find your daily challenges inside of your quick menu. From there, you can basically find any of the more easier challenges to do. And once you've done one daily objective, you essentially have already started your streak. What you really want to do is do at least one daily challenge every single day and then build up your streak. Every time you complete a seven days in a row, you'll get an increase with the amount of gold that you can earn. It starts off with getting uh, 0.2 gold bars per objective that you complete with a bonus for completing them all but then in week two you're already getting 0.3 gold bars for completing all of them the week after that 0.4 gold bars and in week three you will get half a gold bar for every single challenge that you complete which means that if you were to continue doing that and actually getting every single daily challenge done every single day for a week then in a week's time you will be able to earn 35 gold bars which is quite substantial and which should earn you a bunch of gold very quickly obviously the right strategy in my opinion is to not really spend and waste too much time on the objectives that are a little bit more time consuming especially if you're building up your streak what i personally like to do is simply start off by doing one or two daily objectives and when you finally get to that half a gold bar an objective kind of step standpoint then it really becomes uh, worthwhile to really start doing all the daily challenges because you will be getting that potential 35 gold bars every single week right with the daily challenges covered it's probably time to start talking a bit more about the missions because obviously what you want to do is you will simply want to start playing those missions which you should be able to see on your map pop up here and there you'll start out in blackwater and just keep an eye on your map and you should be good to go all the time what you want to do as well by the way is stick to being a good honor person the reason i'm saying that is because if you do so you'll be able to continue all those good honor missions up until you play the mission called destroyed by grief once you finish that mission it's time to switch to bad honor and then you'll be able to complete the last four missions in the game meaning you have covered every single mission within the game and you will be able to have a total of 1200 dollars which you can then use to start investing in other things now before we get into investing in all that stuff let me tell you a bit more about how the missions with good and bad honor work within red dead online the way missions in red dead online work is actually pretty simple you have an honor system like you have in single player but you start in the middle and throughout these missions you're able to make some decisions which are obviously going to affect your honor status now you could decide to immediately go for bad honor status if you were to want to to do so the method of changing to good honor will still be the same however i personally feel that starting out with good honor is more than likely the best way to do it because the bad honor missions are the best ones that you're going to be able to play and like they like to say save the best for last so if you were to decide to stick with the good honor path and finally have finished the mission called destroyed by grief then it's time to switch to bad honor now there's a couple of ways that you can go about switching to bad honor either you can decide to go down to the farm in valentine or an emerald ranch and start killing all the farm animals or you can decide to go to sandini and start going on a cop killing spree 
or potentially the last uh, time consuming way is by going to old man Jones in one of the three locations on the map and give him three gold bars. Like I said before, during the explanation of daily challenges, you should be able to earn them back very quickly, especially if you have the two step verification set up, you already have those three gold bars. It will save you a bunch of time and you'll be able to basically immediately get back to playing more missions that are in the game. Obviously, you can also decide to go from bad honor to good honor by using old man Jones. Having said this though, changing from bad honor to good honor without old man Jones is a lot more difficult. The best way to really go from bad to good honor uh, is really doing bounty hunter missions which is something that you have to purchase in order to be able to do. However, there is another way of getting a bounty hunter license for free, and it's by having Twitch Prime. Now, if you're not yet familiar with Twitch Prime, I'll leave an eye at the top right, which will guide you to a video that I have done it explaining how all this stuff work. And if you already are an active Twitch Prime member, you're not yet using your Twitch Prime subscription on any of your favorite streamers, by all means feel free to consider me by clicking the link in the description down below. So while you're playing these missions, there's one thing that is especially important that you do as a low rank player, and it's looting basically every single body that you see. The main reason for that is because looting bodies can give you a variety of items, and there's also a chance of you picking up some items that are for the collector role. Now, obviously, if you're not yet a collector yourself, there's also an additional way how you can get the collector role for free, and it's by getting all the playing cards in GTA Online. And yes, you guessed it, I have a guide on that as well, which once again will be at the eye in the top right of the video if you want to collect all the cards in GTA Online. And once you have collected all those cards, what will happen is you will be able to get the collector role for free in Red Dead Online. And basically, you will be able to start doing the role, which arguably is the best way of making money within the game. Mind you, this is really a role that is more so for those out there who are much more into exploration and just really like to take in the sides of the game. It's really just simply going around the map and collecting stuff. Uh, having said that though, it is the best way of making money. So if you are interested in doing that, I'll leave a link in the description down below that will guide you to a map which has all the locations for all the items. Good luck out there if you are one of those people that likes to do some collecting. And staying on the topic for looting bodies as well, not only can you also get some stuff from the collector itself, you can also pick up stuff like jewelry for example, which definitely holds a lot of value too, and if you want to sell this stuff, you can sell them like in single player at the fence, which uh, should also get you a couple of bucks pretty quickly as well. Right, so of course, as a new player, you will also have a brand new horse. And with that, there's also some other things that come into play with that, because that horse is it really going to be all that great? So what you really want to do is once you have a little bit of money, you want to make your way to the stables and then purchase yourself a stack of hay. The reason I'm saying that is because with this, you're able to constantly keep your horse cores up and it will actually keep running instead of making your life an absolute misery. Now, if you're someone who has purchased the ultimate edition, making a trip to the stables as quick as possible is definitely worth doing so because your black chestnut American center bat will be waiting there for you for free which is definitely one of the better horses within the game so it will give you a massive advantage to start off with obviously this is not a plug for you buying the ultimate edition i'm just saying in case you purchased the ultimate edition and you were looking for it that's where you will find it another massive thing of course to make your horse better is by purchasing different saddles and stirrups obviously this stuff is going to be a little bit more expensive so it might be with something worth looking into later down the line if you have some more money now of course not only your horse should be keeping in shape what you should personally do as well is keeping yourself in shape like in single player it's pretty essential to keep your horse up the drain rate is not as bad as it is in single player but generally speaking what you want to do is you want to make sure that you always have a little bit of meat or some food stacked up in your satchel so that means that if you see some deer running around simply shooting them in the head and gathering their meat will definitely be a good thing to do and whenever you get close to a fire like for example the one in valentine simply cooking up some meat and just having that just later in your schedule for 
for whenever you course a low is always a good thing to have especially as a low rank your health core isn't all that great and being able to just quickly snack up a little bit so you're able to continue your fight is a very useful thing to have now while you're doing all the stuff in red Dead online there's of course also a bunch of awards that you can get as well now awards are a very nice thing because for example if you get a thousand kills with your repeater once you reach that 1000 kills you're actually able to reset that reward that you got and once you do that you will get 0.2 gold bars now you can do this up to 10 times which is pretty nice because it means that if you get a total of 10,000 kills you'll get two gold bars in total for something that you're basically doing anyway and obviously as you're doing other things as well like buying goods in stores and selling things for example with your trader you can keep resetting these rewards and earn that 0.2 gold bars with it's not a lot but it definitely will add up as you're doing more and more things within the game now speaking of repeaters and guns in general really one thing that you want to always kind of stock up on if you don't really find them from looting bodies which you should be able to get quite a lot is gun oil again if you played single player you're probably familiar with this mechanic it's not as bad as it is in single player again however if you have your gun go over that halfway point in terms of how dirty it is it's going to get really really inaccurate and it's really going to be a pain to use so because of that reason it is very worthwhile of always having some gun oil in your back pocket this will cost you 150 a bottle and you probably don't want to max out your bank accounts uh, buying them right away having about five of them in your backpack will probably set you off nicely to start off with and as you go on and on and do more and more things you know if you see your gun being around the halfway point then it really is time to clean it i wouldn't really start cleaning it early earlier than that because at that point you really will be wasting your gun oil for nothing. Now touching some more on guns and the investment that you want to do with it, if you finally have beaten all the missions, you will have the $1,200 like I mentioned before. Now there's a couple of ways you can go about this. Personally, I'd say that if you're more so focused on PvP and PvE, then the Lancaster Repeater unlocked at rank 12 is going to be your best friend. The base price for this is going to be $243, and if you want to fully upgrade it, it will cost you $373. This is arguably the most accurate repeater within the game, and some might even say the best gun. However, if you're someone that is more so focused on wanting to become a hunter, and potentially even start looking into doing a trader role, then the bolt action rifle will be your friend, which ironically enough only will cost you $3 more if you want to fully upgrade it. The initial base price of the bolt action, however, is a little bit cheaper than the Lancaster repeater, and you can also unlock this at rank 5 versus being able to unlock it at rank 12 like the Lancaster Repeater. All in all, it's a pretty decent rifle to also take out enemies with. However, it only holds five rounds in the mag, and the time it takes to load the next shot is not as fast as the Lancaster Repeater, so with larger groups of enemies, you're gonna be struggling a little bit more, in my opinion. But like I said, if you're someone that's more so focused on hunting and making sure that you keep those perfect pelts intact for the potential trader role, or even selling those animals at the butcher, then it's definitely worth getting a bolt action over over the Lancaster repeater. Now if you spend all that money you obviously want to start earning it back as well and there's actually a very nice thing within Red Dead Online to do so because every five ranks you will unlock a treasure map. Now this treasure map you are able to collect from the post office and once you have collected that it will be inside of your satchel under your documents section. Now in there you will be able to open up this treasure map and it will guide you to a point on the map where you will be able to go to and just simply activate the vibration on your controller if you have one and then you will be able to follow the vibration and obviously the stronger the vibration gets the closer you're going to be now as far as i'm aware there are no vibrating keyboards uh, on the market so on pc you simply want to start looking out for this uh, gold ray coming from the ground because that is another way of recognizing where the treasure is located once you have found that your controller will make one last final vibrate and then it will stop and you will simply be able to pick up the chest which will give you a random amount of rewards in the example shown on screen i got 1.6 gold bars and also a hundred dollars which is very very nice 
indeed. Every five ranks you will be able to get another treasure map and it will go on forever until inevitably you hit the max rank, which at the time of recording I don't even know which one it is. So personally I am rank 160, so even till this day I'm still getting all these treasure maps and they are till this day also very profitable indeed. Because not only do they hold money and gold bars as well, they can potentially also give you some tonics as well. And the last one, certainly not least, is something that we should touch on, which is the ability cards, which is a pretty big part of Red Dead Online. Uh, when you're starting out with the game, you will be getting a option to pick out a Dead Eye card. It will have three options. Realistically speaking, there really is only one option, which is Painted Black. If you played Red Dead Redemption 1, you more than likely know what this is, and if you played single player as well, you also know what it is. It's essentially that exact same thing where you'll be able to paint targets, and it will completely remove bloom from your weapon, so just basically make your gun a laser. Alongside of the fact, you will also get those red crosses like you're familiar from in single player. And in my personal opinion, it's the best Dead Eye card you can have, especially out of the three that you can pick from at the start of the game. Now ability cards and upgrading them though can get quite expensive so at the start what you probably want to focus on is building out your loadout and upgrading the stuff that you already have before thinking about ability cards. Especially because the better ones are unlocked much later though there are two cards which are definitely worth mentioning for general use and those are eye for an eye unlocked at level 28 and Unblinking Eye unlocked at level 26. These two cards are great for your Dead Eye ability drain rate and earning back Dead Eye as well. But it doesn't mean that you're not allowed to experiment because there is a whole variety of different ability cards available in the game. Having said that though, they can get quite expensive, but so do be careful with the things that you do decide. There is plenty of ability cards for every sort of playstyle, every sort of ability or every sort of activity that you do. So definitely uh, be on the lookout for that. Have a scroll through them and see what you like. Upgrading them to level two and three makes them much more powerful. However, upgrading them to level two will cost you $350 and upgrading them from level two to level three will cost you $500. So do keep in mind before you upgrade them that you don't start upgrading all your ability cards mindlessly because that's going to be a very expensive hobby very quickly. If you want to upgrade every single ability cards within the game, you're going to need thousands upon thousands of dollars. So do be very careful when you're starting out with the way you spend your money. And I think that kind of covers everything in terms of how you start out with Retina Online and some general tips with that. Obviously, when you're finally done with getting settled in with Retina Online, there's obviously a bunch of other things you can try out as well. Like, for example, the three roles which are currently available the Bounty Hunter, the Trader, and the Collector. I've touched on a little bit about the Trader and the Collector already, but if you want to know more, especially about the Trader, I've done some videos on them, how you can do them the best way and all that stuff, which I will leave once again in the eye in the top right corner of the video. As well as the fact that the Bounty Hunter is essentially really what it says. It's just simply going around bounties and it's quite fun to do actually. The missions pay out pretty decently as well, but every single role, however, However, if you don't do, for example, the playing cards in GTA Online to get the collector role for free or getting the Twitch Prime uh, deal for the Bounty Hunter, it will cost you 15 gold bars each. Having said that though, it's definitely something worthwhile investing into if you're looking to further deepen your experience in Red Dead Online because they can give you some quite unique and some quite cool experiences and it really is something for everyone. If you're someone that really likes to go after bounties and just kind of do more PvE sort of missions, then Bounty Hunter is something for you. If you're someone who really likes to do hunting and that sort of stuff, then the trader is definitely for you. And if you're more someone who likes to explore the world and just take in the sights, then the collector will definitely fit with that too because essentially what you will be doing is riding around the world picking up all sorts of treasure and then selling them off later for a very big profit and with all that said and with all that done that was it for this one thank you all so very much for watching i hope you found it useful if you did make sure to leave it a like subscribe for more and i'll see you all later